All right. So one of the most common things that people seem uninformed about during my Sherpa sessions and stuff is painkillers and the details surrounding them. So let's talk a bit about painkillers and which ones I like to use, which ones I don't like to use and why, and what exactly they're good for. So first off, what painkillers allow you to do is there's quite a few things. You might've heard the term pre-medding, which means taking medication before necessary and staying on that painkiller effect even before you get into contact. And why that's beneficial is if you're in a fight and you get your leg blacked or you get your leg fractured or you get your arm fractured, etc., cetera, uh, then you start having negative debuffs applied to your character as well as your stomach. But your stomach, instead of immobilizing you or messing up your aim, like your legs or your arms, it causes you to whine like a baby and cough and create a lot of audio cues and such. So... What painkillers do is if your legs get disabled, it allows you to keep moving at a, at a pace faster than a walk. Uh, if your legs are blacked out or, or fractured, you'll still make pain noises and you'll still take damage every time you move, but at least you'll be able to move. Otherwise, with a fracture, um, I believe fractures, you can still sprint. But either way, getting your legs blacked out or fractured is very bad. It immobilizes you, it creates your character to walk at a limping pace, and you create a lot of noise and it hurts when you move. So in order to stay mobile during the times when we take a sniper shot from some guy on customs and he hits us in the legs and our legs get blacked, we want to be on painkillers. Now besides mobility, getting your arms blacked or fractured is also pretty detrimental because what that does is it causes your character's aim to get all wonky. Now, painkillers reduce this effect. They don't completely remove it. But besides the fact that your aim gets bad, your vision also gets cloudy and such, and painkillers help with that too. And then, of course, if you take painkillers and your stomach is blacked out, then you will uh, stop making so much noise. So with that being said, Golden Star, Vaseline, and Ibuprofen are really the only ones that you want to be doing pre-medding with. The other ones you want to use when you need them, these ones are ones you want to use almost all the time. Anytime that I'm going to an area where I suspect I'm going to get into PvP, or anytime that I am moving across a big open location, or anytime that I'm going to be moving for a long period of time, I try to always be on some sort of painkiller. Now, looking at these three, we have Vaseline with a duration of 300 seconds, Golden Star with a duration of 350 seconds, and then Ibuprofen with a duration of 280 seconds. But you also notice that each one has a penalty associated with it of energy or hydration or both. Now, the Golden Star is a little unique in that function because you see here it has energy recovery and hydration recovery. It gives you uh, one every five seconds, but it takes away 19. So how is that useful, you may think? Well, when you're at zero energy or hydration, there's nothing to take. So this will actually give you five of each stat, which isn't a lot. But say you have a stack of 10 of these, it could save your life in a raid. So that's one of the reasons that Golden Star is so valuable. Uh, because it can be a lifesaver, literally, if you run out of food and water. Whereas the other ones will not help you at all in that way. Now, between these two, the Vaseline and the Ibuprofen are the two most common used ones. The Vaseline Bomb only has six charges, though. And I'll be honest with you, if you're serious about pre-medding and finding PvP, you will probably go through Vaseline every one to two raids. So that's where the Ibuprofen really stands out, especially if you're more selective about when you choose the painkill, because it has 15 total uses. And for me, usually that lasts me three or four raids. Uh, but the hydration penalty is much higher. And as you get higher into your levels, like around your 20s to 30s, you want to think about bringing in something like an Aquamari or a water bottle in your secure container and then taking it out if you find something more useful, just so that you 
don't accidentally lose yourself in the sauce and run out of hydration because you're pre-medding and stuff, especially in long sustained PVP situations, or if you're having to wait in location for a long period of time, then you need to pain med, your hydration can go down really, really quickly. And that's an issue all the way until you get elite metabolism, and then it's only a little bit less of an issue. So besides that, for another benefit of these two over Vaseline is that if you save these when you're done using them, uh, one Golden Star, one Ibuprofen, plus I think three meds allows you to craft seven Propitols, which is great because Propitols sell for uh, 20-ish thousand each and Ibuprofen usually 60k, Golden Star is usually 70k. So if you save each of those, when they get down to one use, you can go into your hideout, you can recraft it into Propitol and essentially make all your money back by selling it or using them. So they kind of fund themselves in that way if you're lucky enough to hang on to them. And you always want to try to conserve them when they're down to one use. Um, as you can see here, I keep them all in an area and I use them for crafts. Vaseline actually can be used also, but less importantly so, for a med case barter from therapists with seven blood sets, seven syringes, two Vaselines, and four med tools which all that other stuff is pretty easy to find, except the syringes get a little eh, but that's an easy way to barter your Vaselines and make your money back by getting more cases or something of the sort. So beyond that, we also have some other additional options for healing. And these are things that I also take into every raid, uh, pretty much. So you see here in my injector case, which I would also recommend getting as soon as possible. We don't have any morphines, but that's because I often find and use them as I find them in raid. They're quite common, but I always carry a ton of propitol. So propitol is basically an instant painkiller on the level of these with a duration of, I guess, 300 seconds, pretty much. Around 240 to 300 seconds. Yeah, right here, 240 second painkiller. But it has a much faster use time of 2 seconds compared to a use time of 7 seconds or a use time of 5 seconds. So when you forgot the pain med and you take a sniper shot to the leg and now you're disabled, a propitol is what's going to save your life in that moment instead of one of these which are probably going to get you killed. Now, I use these like candy, but what propitol is also really good for is like, for example, on a map like Factory, if you take one and you, you hot, hot key it before you go into raid, you'll be able to be on painkiller plus have passive healing in small amounts right out the gate, which can definitely save your life. And I often find myself dying many more times when I don't do that because someone, let's say, for example, hits me with a shotgun in the legs and lowers my ability and then you get swarmed. Whereas a Propitol, being on a Propitol would have solved that issue. You could have kept moving. So besides that, it gives you a little bit of health back. It, gets, it boosts your health and vitality stats, whatever. Uh, and then after a certain period of time, you get withdrawals. The withdrawals aren't that bad because they only last about 30 seconds. But if you ever have the withdrawal symptoms, you're probably going to want to wait in a location. Just wait them out. Otherwise, taking more Propitol can be a good way to fix that. Now, morphine is a very, very cheap option for painkillers. And if you really don't think that pain medding is important, I would at least recommend you to bring in one of these so that you have an option to painkill in a quick fashion in a bind without having to take up the slots in your inventory with painkillers. So morphines are always quick and handy to have, especially hotkeyed. They can save your life as well. Now, these are all the healing items that I would rec recommend actually using. And then down here are two that I would recommend not using. Now, everybody has to use these in the beginning. Because for a long time, you're only going to be able to get these. And you're not going to be able to get these unless you find them or until you get to the flea market. But let's go over why this is bad. With four uses available, you're not going to have enough to stay pre-medded through the duration of the raid. But not only do you not have enough to be protected with the painkiller effect through 
long open areas, but you also take one of the most severe hydration penalties of all the options. Not only that, but it has some of the shortest durations by over, you know, five times as short as the others with pain. So not only is there not enough of it, and not only does it cost a lot to use, but it doesn't last long enough. So overall, these are horrible. But that's not to say that you shouldn't take them with you because they're your only option if you don't have a surgery kit or you run out of that and you still need to make it to extract, but you can only walk at a limp. Taking these will at least allow you to stay mobile at a sprinting speed or a running speed for 80 seconds, which can be life-saving. So bring one with you, and then as soon as you can, upgrade to one of these types. Now beyond that, something I see a lot of people doing is running with Augmentin in place of any painkillers, especially new players. As a new player, that's not really a bad plan if you can't get your hands on any of the good ones. But at 150 seconds, but only one use, you're better off just taking a morphine, if you can. Better off taking one or two morphines, they're gonna last twice as long, they take the same amount of space, and they apply slightly faster by about three seconds, I guess. However, the penalties on this one aren't that bad. Another thing that it does is it removes toxification so that you become a nicer gamer and you stop yelling at people for killing you on factory when you're naked. Uh, and it also protects you against cultists. Uh, if you get stabbed by one, Augmentin is one of the ways that you can cure the poison effect that they apply to you. So that's that. So that's basically it. Now, let me go into Raid and I'll show you guys exactly what I mean by the, these, by the, the effects that uh, painkillers have on you or not. All right. All right, so we've made it into the raid and we're not on any painkillers yet. So let's see what happens when you break your legs. All right, so we've got two fractures and I need to take, well, I can't, oh, we'll take a Zagustin so that I don't bleed to death. I didn't expect that. All right, so you'll notice at the bottom left there my maximum movement speed is heavily reduced. My gun is swaying up and down with each step, which does affect the aim. And I'm actually unable to sprint with two fractures. So we're going to take painkillers now. And look at the bottom left. As soon as you're on painkillers, your movement speed is reduced almost back to full with a slight decrease. I think that's because of my gear weight, though. And my aim is steadied. And it's almost like nothing happened until I go to run. And when I go to run, I take damage, but I'm almost able to function just fine. As well as jumping and stuff. Just fine. So the benefits are obvious. And the same thing kind of applies for your arms. If your arms are broken, your vision would be messed up and your aim would be messed up. And if you take painkillers, it's a little bit reduced. All right, so now let's see the example with blacked out legs and I'll show you guys the effects of that. Someone pointed out to me that my face cam was blocking the movement speed thing so this time pay attention to that because I moved it so you guys can see it. Oh my god I didn't bleed. Alright so imagine trying to dodge a sniper while you're moving like this. Even your jump height is reduced. In fact we can just jump a bunch of times to black our legs because we take damage each time we move. Never thought it would be so hard to get blacked. You know what I'm saying? They make it look so easy on the internet. Alright. So now that my legs are blacked, it's even worse than before. I don't know if you guys can see the difference between this and the last example, but my legs are bobbing even more. Same movement speed. And I still can't sprint. Jumping height seems about the same. And also you see my vision is pretty fucked up. But now if we take a Propitol, the world becomes a better place. Because even when your legs are blacked out, you have increased aiming ability, increased mobility, and your jump height's back to normal. 
but you're still going to take damage from your legs being blacked out. So, once again, your arms aren't as big of a deal, but it does help, and it's always worth to bring pankos in. So, hope you guys learned something. Thanks for watching.